All right, so the NAR changes are going to go into effect in pretty much every single market in just about a week's time. So this is this opportunity that we have right now isn't going to last that long. And that is this confusion, confusion in the marketplace. Brokers are confused. Team leaders are confused. And certainly the real estate agent industry is confused, confused about what you say, you, you ask, confused about everything. Confused about how to implement these changes, confused on what these uh, the NAR settlement changes are and what they are not. And so therefore, there's a really unique opportunity that we've that I've never seen anyway, since I've been in the business for about 20 years. I've never seen this type of opportunity. And typically, with change, if you really look at it closely, comes great opportunity for those that are looking for it. You see why all of these agents right now are bitching and moaning and complaining about, oh, uh, it's not right. It's not fair, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it, the old way is better. There is a massive opportunity for those that are willing to accept what it is, move forward and go out there and secure more business than they ever have before. How is what I'm going to talk about in this video. All right. So here's what I've noticed. These changes, the NAR settlement changes have gone uh, into effect in my market for what about a month and a half now. And so I made a video about the way uh, I believe the new uh, structure to listings will happen will, will, will take place across the country here in just a couple of weeks. And those that are in markets where the changes haven't taken place, their bias is so strong that it almost blinds them. And so I mentioned some things in that video. I'll link to that in the description below. Uh, I'm going to make some references in this video uh, that I mentioned in that video that agents are just, they're struggling with it. Their, their bias is so deep. It's so strong that they are going to uh, lose on this opportunity that I'm going to mention in just a second. All right. So what I want to start with is a couple of these biases that I'm, that I'm referring to. All right, and I'll share my my iPad just to kind of map these out so you can get a visual of this thing, all right? One of the things that has taken place because my market has already implemented these changes in our MLS is that nowhere in our MLS, okay, not in the agent remarks and certainly not nowhere on the actual listing itself, is there there's no mention of compensation or commission and not just that, or concessions. Because one of the things that people wanted to argue with for a long time is, oh, well, that's fine. We don't have to call it compensation. We don't have to call it commission. We'll just call it concessions. We'll just say in the agent remarks, you know, uh, seller, you know, offering uh, 3% seller concessions, which the buyer can use for whatever reason they want. That is all true. That is all true. However, that's not what I saw in my market. When these changes got implemented right away, you saw none of this. We've seen none of it. None. We're talking about 99% of the listings in my market right now have no mention of any one of these three things. None. Zero. And guess what happened? Nothing. <laughs> Houses, we still got the same amount of showings because the argument that so many wanted to make with me last week whether that was on Instagram or YouTube, is no, 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 no. It's so much better for the seller to offer this buyer agent commission up front. And I'm going to talk about why that is not better for the seller in just a second and the opportunity that you have. And I'll, I'll get through all of that in just a minute. Just you got to stay with me. I can't say something four minutes in this video. You get all emotional, run down to the keyboard and become the keyboard warrior and start talking shit, right? So just relax, right? L hear me out for a minute and then make your arguments, all right? So. In my market, I mean, again, this is not theory. None of the listings had any mention of compensation, commission, or concessions. Yet, showings, okay, again, everybody wanted to tell me I was crazy. Oh, the, the showings are going to drop off like crazy. Nope. Showings were just fine. We got seven showings per week on average per listing in the MLS before when we were offering buyer agent compensation up front. And it's still averaging at seven showings per week when there's no compensation being offered uh, up front. Now, when I say being offered, I'll explain to you, I'll give you a little bit more context. 
It's not that it's not being offered. This was the biggest confusion in the marketplace right now. I am not suggesting for one second that you recommend, nor am I seeing sellers not offering it. We're we're just there's the seller no longer has to um, offer an upfront fixed buyer agent commission uh, percentage. Don't need it. Not only don't need it, haven't seen it. It's not that the sellers aren't doing it, but unlike before, where you could go into any listing across any MLS in the country and see, you know, 2%, 2.5%, depending on what mark you are, 3%, or whatever. And the buyer agent would be able to see you. That's the co-oping commission. We didn't see, we're not seeing any of that. There is buyer agent commission being negotiated on almost every transaction. It's just that the sellers aren't agreeing to it up front. And everything is just fine, which is going to play into the opportunity that those of you that understand this accept it for what it is and can move forward and get out of your old bias, you are going to see a massive hole in the in, in the market in just a second, in a good way for, for yourself if you're a listing agent. So that's number one. Number one, again, we didn't see any commission uh, concessions, compensation being offered, and showings happened as normal. Properties were selling with multiple offers as normal. Everything was normal. Because what was happening is rather than things being offered up front, this is all I was trying to say that agents got all up in arms about is that the buyer agent was putting the buyer agent commission in the offer. And we were just negotiating that as a part of the buyer's offer to the seller. That's the only difference is that this compensation now just becomes part of the offer. That's all. And so what is this opportunity I'm referring to? I'm not going to regurgitate the entire video. If you want to go back and watch it, you can. Again, I'll link you to it in the description, okay? The point of this video is to not even talk about any of that stuff. It's to talk about the opportunity now that you have as these agents struggle so badly understanding this concept. Here's the opportunity that you have. Most of the agents, I shouldn't say most. I would say it's it's probably 50-50. 50% of the, uh, of the agents, regardless of market, that are just having such a tough time with this, they're still going to uh, meet with the seller. All right, so this is going to be, we'll call this uh, seller. This is Bob, and Bob's the seller. And we still have 50%, maybe more, of the agents, okay? We'll call this uh, listing agent. They're still going to meet with these sellers because they, they just can't accept what is, and they're going to still go and try and list this house and collect both sides of the commission. Rather than accepting the fact that commissions have been decoupled, and in fact, it's actually better, I'll, I'll give you my arguments on why that is in just a second. It took me a long time, believe me, I didn't just get there overnight, so it might take you a couple months to understand this, and it'll hit you like it hit me. You have probably, I'm gonna guess, right? This is a huge guess, but I'm gonna say 50 to 70% of the agents out there are refusing to accept the changes and so they're prepared. And not just them, their brokers are too. Brokers are confused. Brokers that own companies are still confused. They're changing stuff like crazy. I had a conversation, not to sidetrack, but really quick. I had a conversation with a, a broker one week and he was dead set on the old existing model. It was a week later, he changed, he has a company of 300 agents, changed the entire model in one week. One week. But he was dead set on what I'm about to say is that 50 to 70% of the agents are still going to go meet with the seller and they're still going to go and charge this seller somewhere between 5 and 6% and explain why they should offer buyer agent commission uh, up front. And they're going to give them all the arguments on why the seller should continue to do that. And they're going to offer uh, a buyer agent commission of, you know, whatever they're going to offer. Most of the agents I'm seeing are still that still believe in this are still charging 3%. This is the argument they're going to make. This is the old, I guess, existing model in most of our markets. 50 to 70% of your competitors are going to continue to, to operate this way. And now here's the opportunity. For those of you that understand the changes, they understand this opportunity, here's what you can do as a result. 
So you got most of your competition doing this. You can go and meet with Bob, okay, right afterwards, okay? This is going to be you. And you can go meet with Bob and say, Bob, you, 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 do, you do not have to do this, my friend. It's not that we're not going to entertain buyer agency. It's just you don't have to agree to an amount up front. The same way, Bob, that if we were going to list the house at 500000 the same way we would never go out to the marketplace to say, okay, I know we're offering, we're asking five hundred, but we're really willing to accept 450000 We would never show your cards like that, Bob, would we? And Bob, the seller, would say, no, that would be ridiculous. I wouldn't even hire you if that's what you recommended I do. Did you catch it? Did you catch it? This is what this old model is doing. Okay, some of you are like, nope, I didn't catch it. All right, so let me really break down the math. I'm going to go old, new. Again, people make decisions how? Emotionally. It's all a perception. Okay, if you really get this, maybe it hits you and you're like, oh my gosh, it's like seeing for the first time. Okay, old model. Let's just say that we're going to list this house uh, for the sake of argument at $500,000. All right, we'll just use this as an example. And again, seller's Bob, so you know who I'm referencing when I'm talking about Bob. Old model, old listing agent says, all right, we need to list this thing at five. We're just going to say 6%. I know some of you don't like that. I'm just giving you an example. It could be whatever you charge. I'm just giving you an example. And then from this, you're making the argument of, uh, well, we need to offer that 3% to the buyer agent commission. So you get more showings. More showings means more interest. More interest means better offer. It means you get more. all that stuff you guys all, all say to me. Okay. Well, how is this old model any different than taking the $500,000 listing price? Hear me out. This is the thing that, that hit me one day. I was like, this is crazy. How is that any different? Because you could do simple math, right? 3% of 500,000 is 15,000, yeah? Well, why wouldn't you then, if you are so dead set on this is better for the seller and this is how I'm gonna do it and Brandon, you're insane, then tell me this. Why would you not then go out there for your client because you're a fiduciary, remember, right? Your job is not the responsibility for saving the real estate industry. Your job is to protect and to serve your seller. We're not talking about buyer agency in these videos. We're talking about working with the seller, protecting the seller, working for the seller, okay? How is it then, or why wouldn't you then, if this is what you believe, if you're at a $500,000 list price, and if this is what you believe, why would you not put in the agent remarks this then? So as an example, agent remarks, uh, $500,000 list price, seller willing to accept 475. How is it any different? Tell me how it's different. Tell me how these two things are different. You're saying the same thing. You're going out into the marketplace to say, Listen, we're, we're, we're willing to offer this up front with no negotiation. This is what you are going to get guaranteed. Well, how is that any different than saying to a buyer, we're listed at 500, but you, we guarantee you, you can get this house for 475. Would you ever do that as a listing agent? And now you say, wow, that's a good point. I hope you're saying that's a good point. Now I know some of you are mad right now. You're already in the comments talking shit. It's okay. But some of you are like, dude, I would never, ever, 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 ever do this. I would never come out with a list price and then start to negotiate against myself and my seller from day one. Okay, well, isn't that exactly what this model does? It's not that that it's not that the seller isn't going to pay a three percent agent uh, buyer agent commission. I'm not saying that. Here's what I am saying: the new listing agent goes in, and as an example, you could charge a hundred dollars, five dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars, one percent, two percent, ten percent, twenty percent, six. It's all negotiable. As an example, the new listing agent. We'll say, Bob, you do not have to do this, my friend. It makes no sense to show our cards like that up front. Negotiating 101 is to get the other person to give you the number first. Yes? Of course, yes. So the new listing agent goes in there, secures listing side compensation only. Well, for sake of argument, we're just going to say that this agent charges 3%. Now, the perception is to the seller, Bob, Bob says, okay, if all things are equal, but one agent's charging 6% and adamant about why he needs to do that. And one agent saying half and adamant on why he doesn't need to do that. Just the perception. You might be better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can make all the, 
I'm just saying the perception playing to the odds, which is more likely to stick out as valuable to Bob. Yeah, you could say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, Bob's going to pick the 6%. And here's why. I'm just saying likely. What's the probability? I don't want to be this agent and then have another agent come right behind me and start saying all the reasons on why I was wrong and charge half. It makes this look, agent look like they're, sh they're shady doing something wrong. And then we set an expectation. Listen closely. I know I'm getting a little excited about this. It's just that it's a great opportunity. You set the expectation with the seller. Here's an expectation that when buyer agents submit offers, they're going to ask for money. So rather, Bob, than like the old days, the way that we used to do it, we would have to collect and, and decide on how much we're going to offer a buyer agent up front. We don't have to do that anymore. We can just simply say buyer agents are welcome, right? Buyer agents welcome. Submit your offer. Include your commission uh, addendum with your offer. And the seller is open and will review any and all offers. And will negotiate the buyer agent commission through the offer. And based on how strong the offer is, we'll determine how much the seller is willing to pay. And my whole point with this whole thing, maybe the seller, Bob, does pay a 3% buyer agent commission when it's all said and done. But he only does so because it was through a negotiation, through an offer that made sense for Bob. Bob didn't agree up front day one to show his cards to weaken his position in the marketplace. No, 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 no. He's not going to do that. He's going to get the buyer agent to go and negotiate their own commission. And so what is the opportunity, you ask? Well, hopefully you just saw it. Right now, you have, again, I'm guessing, but you probably have 50 to 70% of the market still on this old model. They can't get off of it. They can't understand a new world. The bias is too deep rooted. They can't get, they can't, even if, even though it's happening in markets right now, they still refuse to believe. So this is only going to last for maybe a month, maybe two, where you can go into every listing appointment when all your competitors are still fighting for this old model. And you can go in there like the knight or the princess of shine in shining armor and go and secure listings like crazy under the new model. Serve your seller. Everybody wins. Watch this. Nobody loses. This is why I'm like, why are you guys getting mad? Everyone wins in this model. How? Watch. Okay. Talk about the seller. This is who we're talking about in this video, right? This is who we're serving is the seller. Number one, the seller does not have to negotiate against themselves from day one. So we're protecting their bottom line. Okay? So we're protecting their bottom line, which is our job as the listing agent. We're going to say, listen, we're open to any and all offers. We're not going to just come out of the gate and say, yeah, this is what we're willing to do. We don't even know what kind of offers are going to come in, but sure. Uh, we're just willing we'll to drop 15, 20,000 off our asking price from day one. N doesn't make sense to do that. So the seller wins. Seller's in good shape. Listing agent is going to win under these new circumstances. They still, they still earn their fee or more. This is not a video about how many of the buyers are going to go directly to listing agents, although it'll be a lot substantially more. Listing agents will comp get compensated more for that as well. We're just talking about the model where listing agents and buyer agents uh, are still doing business together like we always have. Listing agent still goes out there, protects their seller, and still earns what they earn. No risk there. Their compensation is fine. Buyer agents, the thing that you guys are all so upset about, they still are going to get paid about the same. Why? They're just putting their comp in the commission or in the in the offer. So seller hires listing agent for let's just say 3%. Buyer agent submits a really strong offer to the seller, asks for 3%. Seller ends up paying somewhere between 5 and 6% like they always have done. Buyer agent gets their 2 or 3% like they always have. Listing agent gets their 2 to 3% like they always have. At, when you look at the when you look at the net sheet, when you look at a, a settlement uh, uh, document, it's still if you didn't know the changes happened, you wouldn't have known any settlement happened. You'd say, "Wow, it looks kind of the same." Let me see. Uh, okay, sellers paying total compensation five or six percent. Okay, that, that's how it always has been. Listing agent looks like listing agents charging the seller three percent. Okay, and looks like the three percent needs to go to the buyer agent. You wouldn't even know anything's different. It's just the how we got there that's different that's 
causing the big uproar, causing agents to get super emotional, super upset. So the opportunity that some of you have that understand that perception is the seller's reality, you can go in there, right? Communicate everything we just talked about. Opportunity is not going to last that long for sure, but you can go in there and communicate everything we just talked about while your competitors are still caught up in the old model, willing to accept uh, change, and you should be able to stack a ton of listings. It'll be very difficult to compete with you under these new circumstances. Again, you have to take advantage of it right now.